for the Cover 2 podcast. This is episode number 11. I have no idea. It's been a while since we've uh, since we've done one of these. We've been getting questions that I haven't responded to really any of them. Yeah, but that's not that's nothing new for podcast. you. Um, what do you no. mean? I respond to comments occasionally. Uh, uh-huh. I respond more to your comments than you respond to comments. That's fair. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to deal with some people. Like when some people drop just ridiculous opinions, like they just don't defend like us. My Twitch chat last night was a disaster. Someone said, uh. I'm sure you'll back me up on a few of these. I'll give you two examples. They said, uh, one, Baker Mayfield, is he's going to have a decent season, but he's going to be really turnover prone. And I said, okay, that's interesting. How can you have a really good season but be super turnover prone? Like how many turnovers? And he said 12 to 15 interceptions. I'm like 12 to 15 as a rookie quarterback is not that much. On not top of the many. fact that he's one of the least – Turnover, turnover prone, prone worthy cool. quarterbacks in seen. like ever <laughs> yeah and uh he also said lamar jackson should play wide receiver and i said why and he goes well look at braxton miller and terrell Pryor." i'm like awful opinion oh they're I, totally different players i saw a video from lamar jackson in high school using a high school football so obviously not the same size as a college football throw the ball 95 yards in the air it's pretty it's pretty good Braxton Miller can throw it like you know, 45. But he can throw it 70 miles per hour. <laughs> That's what he said. He said he could throw 70 mile per hour football. I disagree with that statement. <laughs> you just can't. I don't think there's I don't think there's any player who's ever you done that. Do that. Like Patrick Mahomes has literally 60. a frozen rope and is like 63. It, I, he was at the combine. It was measured at 60 flat. Was it? Was it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I looked into this like a couple weeks ago. Okay. So if I recall correctly. Yeah, that, that's, uh, there's that. Ridiculous opinion. Uh, fun fact, because I've mentioned it many times, I have not mentioned it on here, I don't think, that Baker Mayfield and Josh Allen had very similar um, RPM and pass velocity at the Senior Bowl. Ooh. So people are saying that Mayfield doesn't have a very good arm and Allen has like the best arm they've ever seen, yet the pass And he's is- tall. Uh, he's very tall. He's so tall. Did you see? Did, did, did you see that thing where they were throwing into the net with no. Baker Mayfield and Josh Allen? Okay, so they were there and they were throwing into the net. It was ten yards in front of them, and there were uh, three buckets that they had to throw into, left, right, and center. Sorry, uh, yeah, Tell me yeah. Josh Allen missed. <clears throat> so Mayfield, he goes through the drill. He's moving around, and they say, "Okay, throw," and he throws, and he nails it. Okay, so Josh Allen comes up. They go do do do, and he goes and he throws and he throws it over, the entire thing, and Baker Mayfield oh, just Baker Mayfield standing there and he just watches the ball travel and continue going, <laughs> continue going <laughs> as, the, as the video ends. He literally threw it over the net. It was ten yards away, and he missed by like clip. six yards. Oh, yeah, it's so great. It's on Twitter. I'll I'll find it some. I'll find. It, I'll send it to you later, but. Uh, hey guys, as, as we were just kind of talking, relaxing, having a good time. Um, like I said, this is the Cover 2 Podcast. We're back in action. Um, I was on vacation last week. Bang on I, our schedules didn't match up the, fo- the previous week. So um, it's been a while, but the Combine has begun. Yes, people are arriving. They are here in Indianapolis. We're not here in Indianapolis, unfortunately. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Maybe. Um, That'd be fun. That, that would be really fun. Yeah, we um, wouldn't be able to get access. No, I, I would. May, maybe. Oh, really? I, I think I could, yeah. Bold. I, I, th- I think I could try to finagle some some credentials in by this time next year. I, I'm, I'm, go- I'm aiming for the Senior Bowl, so if I can do that, um, you know, you never know. But regardless, combine would be really fun. Guys are funneling in quarterbacks, running backs, offensive linemen, wide receivers, tight ends, all have been measured. All have been tested for, you know, height, I weight. I just saw the clip. Oh, you just saw the clip? Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's so bad, man. <laughs> and you just see Mayfield just staring at it. But, uh, <laughs> but oh, I mean, on top of that, the defensive backs, the defensive linemen, um, all of those guys, linebackers, will be coming tomorrow and the next day. Um, fun fact, you know, guys don't stay there the whole, the whole week. You know, guys who arrived on Tuesday leave usually on Friday, Saturday. Um, that's just how it works. So, uh, tomorrow the official drills start, which is going to be really Very cool. excited. Um, 9am for those of you who don't know on NFL network. Um, I already have my full document ready 
Um, if you want, I can send you that as well, where I have every single player by position sorted by name Ooh. with uh, with different areas so I can jot down their 40 time and any notes I have for drills and overall thoughts so I can go back and watch players who pique my interest. Um, I put that together a few days ago when I was sick. That's but, fun. Yeah, you know, it's just a good way to keep track. But regardless, it's... Uh, yeah, maybe I'll post that on... Uh, Maybe I'll post Twitter or that. Something? Yeah, that way people can. I'll, I'll put it onto Google Sheets or something so people can mm. access it. Um, regardless, that's uh, that's something that we're doing. And you know, in this episode, we're going to be rebuilding the Denver Broncos, who they have some interesting things going for them. Uh, we're going to be previewing the combine, seeing you know a variety of things, um, whether it be specific players, things that either reassuring what we already know about players, confirming, you know, newfound thoughts, you know, whether, you know, if Tremaine Edmonds at 6'5", 250 ends up running like a 4'5", we're going to be That'd like... That'd be ridiculous. You'd be like, oh my God. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if he runs I a 4... I think he will. Well, I, I, you know, I think he'll run sub 4'6'5". Okay. I, I see but him projected at 4'7". Um, I think he's a little bit faster than that. If he's a 4'7 guy, though, as a Mike, I could be yeah, okay still, with that. Yeah. I mean, Very tall, Mike linebacker. Oh yeah, like that's huge. Um, Leighton Van Der Esch. That's even six five. Uh, Anthony Barr. Yeah, he's more of an outside guy though. He's not a Mike. Yeah, no, he's he's six five two sixty five. Yeah. So, I but like, you're he, a Mike linebacker. He, he's he's really not the only. Edmonds is. He's really the only comparison I can think of. But if you want to just mm-hmm. take over for a second and talk, I can uh, I can look that up real quick. Uh, well, I, I heard you mention an interesting player, Leighton Vanden Esch. Van Der Esch. I, I say Leighton. I, I was thinking, I was typing when I said that, and I, I yes. typed Leighton. It, yeah, it's, uh, it's so Leighton I, Van Der Esch. Yeah, so when I said, I got to the Vander part of his name, I was at the end of late. Yeah. So Leighton, I said Vanden by accident, and I maybe thought of Kyle Vandenbosch or something. Uh, but out of Boise State, he's, <clears throat> he's a decent player. Mike Option is generating some buzz recently. Yeah, okay. He could um, sneak his way into the first round, maybe. I could see that. Um, guys who are six foot five at the combine who were billed as inside backers past nineteen years: Zach Diasi, Brandon oh, Sa- Giants, uh, six five out of Brown, uh, Brandon Southward, whoops, six four out of Colorado, um, Bernardrick McKinney, six four out of He's Mississippi good. State. Yeah, yeah, not six five though. No, Jordan Zumwalt. I mean, these are guys who are six four now. J- Jordan Zumwalt, UCLA, six four. Jonathan Stewart, Texas A and M, six four. Um, Audie Cole, six four. Martez Wilson, six four. Rolando McLean, six four. Um, Kiko Alonso, six three and three eighths, and then it kind of goes down from there. Um, Not a lot of good players on that list. No, I mean Scott Fug- Scott Fujita was six six as an outside Ball backer. Uh, Manny Lawson, six six. Uh, Leonard Floyd, but he's more of an edge. Mm. Uh, Trent Murphy, more of an edge. Uh, Anthony Barr, more of a, a will. Um, Kyler Fackrell, more of an edge. Yeah, I mean, that's... Erlocker was 6'4". I mean, Could he's... Be, I, don't, I don't remember. No, he is. I don't remember. Okay, take your word for it. Uh, I'm looking on mock draftable. I'm taking your word for it. 6'4", 258, and you ran a 4'59". Holy shit. That's an athlete. With 27 reps on the bench press and with a 77th percentile short shuttle, 84th percentile broad jump. That's that's unreal. That is. He profiles as well. He profiles as Javon Curse. <laughs> Javon Curse was such a beast for he was, one year. He was good more than that. Mm. I, I, I like Javon Curse. Uh, Javon Curse. I mean, he had he 74 had career sacks. Yeah, I'm being um, a little bit facetious with that. but uh, Okay, his first year, his second year, his third year, he had over 10 sacks each of the first three. Then mm. he had injuries, nine and a half, seven and a half, seven and a half, and then he kind of fell off. His hands were gigantic. Oh, yeah, like, whew, just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, they don't have his hand size on Mock Draftable, though. I bet if I went on NFL Draft Scout, they would, if, if the site's working, which it, it still might be down. Um... Regardless, if you want to keep talking. Um, so, Leighton Van Der Esch is, is an interesting player. People compare, I haven't looked at him enough. People compare him a lot to Urlacher, but I think it's more of a lazy comparison because of the fact that he is, of course, 
um, and another uh, Mountain West guy. Um, he's Boise State and Urlacher was New Mexico State. But, I mean, you know, it's it's hard to compare the two. I think they can both fulfill a similar role, but I think it's pretty high praise to, to compare, compare him. Compare same linebacker. Yeah. As for uh, Tremaine Edmonds, though, he's 19. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. How are you in the NFL? Pretty much. Yeah, like he's. He will be drafted at 19 years old as a teenager. I know it, it's. Well, he, yeah, he's he's not even going to be able to drink until his second year in the NFL. <laughs> That's I'm sure he might break the law a couple times. I'm probably. I'm sure he probably already has. Um, let, let's yes. let's let's not throw him under the bus though. Uh, allegedly, not Ooh. not even not even. Uh. <laughs> but uh. He's disgusting. Yeah, he could be really good. If Van Der Esch is under 475, I'd be really pleased with that number. I don't think he'll get a first-round recommendation from me, or I don't think he'll get a first-round grade from me if he is under, uh, if he's at 475 or so. But if he gets, you know, 47, 468, somewhere in there, I could definitely see it. Um, Tremaine Edmonds, I mean, I think he's probably already going to be a top 15 player for me in general. But mm-hmm. I think if he times well, not not so much the verdict, not so much the 40 time, if his agility scores are high, which I think it's projected to be pretty good. Um, you know, he's he seems like he's a pretty good athlete in general. If he ends up being a guy who could have really good short shuttle and three cone, I think he'll easily move his way into the top 10 for me. And there's I just could never rationalize taking him over Roquan Smith because I just well, see a better player. Yeah, well, Roquan, I mean, he's, he's projected to be a 4-5 flat guy, which is freaking I don't think terrifying. He's that fast. It, it, yeah, that, <laughs> that's ridiculous. I think it'll be like one. more, uh, I think 4-5-8. If he's 4-5-8, he's Deion Jones. If he's 4-5 flat, he's closer to Bobby Wagner, which, I mean... You know what? No, the the direct comparison that I'm going to be doing for him is probably a better version of Zach Brown. The way that Brown flies around the field and is good in mm. coverage and does those sort of things. I think his coverage instincts coming out are obviously much better. He's but so good. <laughs> he is so good. His Best coverage linebacker I've seen um, since you know, Patrick Willis coming out. You know what? That's pretty high praise, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's much of a reach either. Well, um, a lot of players at the linebacker position don't have coverage down because, you know, they work yeah. on so many different things, you know, form tackling and reading the quarterback and shedding blocks and hitting gaps. They don't focus on, you know, uh, fluidity of dropbacks. Like, that's not a, that's a defensive back drill. So um, There's one thing that I so will clean. say about okay. Roquan. He does not profile as a mid-linebacker. To me. I would I would agree with that. He doesn't shed blocks at a high enough level. So because of that, you have to be a scheme fit. I think he'll fit in pretty much anywhere. <clears throat> I, think I think he it, will. It'd be as hard well. for us to say that he wouldn't. I think if you want to put him as a Sam, I'm I'm not a huge fan of putting him as a Sam, but if you if you have to, I could see that. But considering the way that the NFL is kind of transformed to being that. Uh, that nickel base as you know as their as their point of attack i would have to say that teams that are a little bit more i don't know i i know what you're saying that he could probably fit either way but for the teams that are still base four three because i think teams will look at him that way i think because nfl teams even though they don't think that way that it's you know four three versus three four base anymore that they'll still say, well, he's a base four three linebacker, not a not a nickel backer, which you know it does it doesn't make any sense that they would think that way because I mean I think I saw something like fifty eight percent of all snaps are sub packages now, which is I mean that's all you need to know. It's the the, the era of base downs are far behind us. So let me ask you a question here. Let me let me propose something. Okay. And this is something I haven't seen it in any mock draft I've ever looked at. Okay. How exciting would it be to see Roquan Smith as a San Francisco 49er? Oh god, that would be <laughs> He would fit in so well next yeah. to uh Would you believe that I've actually seen Foster it as, You know, would would you believe that I've actually seen that in a mock draft? No. 
<laughs> I, I haven't. I, I have seen it once, and it was because it was after uh, Ruben Foster got arrested. Yeah, I don't know what his deal is, dude. Just, like, stop doing dumb stuff. I mean... Just, you're so good. All you have to do is stay on the field. Yeah, it's... Do you know how that's uh, evolved at all? Or I don't... I haven't heard I haven't anything. I haven't seen an update, yeah. He, he just needs to avoid the month of March and February. Like, he just needs to avoid these two months out of the year every year for the rest of his life. You just don't do anything during that time. He needs to just, I wouldn't say lock himself in a room because that's what happened to, uh, to Dion Jordan, but, um, Dion Jordan was really productive last year for the Seahawks and limited. He was one of, uh, I I tracked that he had, um, the highest percentage of pressures per snap in the NFL. That's ridiculous. Yes. That's top three. 20, 20% of his snaps. He generated a pressure. I wonder if that like what the situations were on those. I, I don't know. That that's a good oh, question. Yeah. It, it probably would have been sub packages because I think well, that's yeah. the only time they used him. Um, but it, it was very limited. But he had the highest percentage by far. Oh look at that! You subscribed. I did. Look at that! Bangle subscribing to the podcast. <laughs> so good. How could I not? Exactly. So. <clears throat> exactly. Um, let's talk about, so we talked about Roquan. Um, I, I, I agree. He's the top 10 player. He's going to be my number one linebacker. Um, fits for him. What's the earliest you could see him going? Not, not what you would want. Like not if, not, not if we were the GMs, what is the earliest you think earliest he could go? Earliest possible he goes, I think is two to the Giants. Earliest possible. Do you really think that they would take a linebacker number two? No, I don't, but I think that's the earliest possible. I think no. I'm, I'm saying to... I'm like realistically. Oh, like realistically. Yeah. Um. Three to the Colts. Not even. Not even like being. Wow. Fun. Colts could use a linebacker. They see Roquan Smith high enough on their board. They might say, "All right, we have a generational potentially tight." I don't think he's necessarily generational the way like Saquon Barkley is, in my opinion. But I say, yeah. "Hey, this is our franchise linebacker. Lead our defense." I think Roquan Smith fits that profile really, really well. They need help on defense. Maybe they say, hey, our defensive line is good enough. We have some playmakers there. Got Jabal Sheard. We're fine. Henry Anderson's a decent player. They say, hey, maybe we take the second level uh, of our defense and upgrade that. Roquan Smith, the number three of the Colts. It's possible. I don't think it's the most likely, but that, that's as high as I see him going. Okay. Uh... And it's a fair argument for it as well. Oh, no, there's an absolutely a fair argument for it. Um, I'm just trying to think. What would be the earliest I could see him going? I don't think. I I personally don't think he's on the board at three. I don't uh, either. But not not on the board at three. I, you you know what I mean. Um, there's I a, yeah. No, there's a reasonable argument. You don't think he's like, on the table necessarily. Yes. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I would say the earliest I could see him going would be maybe six or seven. Twenty eighteen. So you said you're saying like what Bears or Niners? Uh, not, not not bears. Uh, um, no, but niners are later. Um, six is Jets. Seven is Bucks. Okay. Us. Uh, so, okay. No. Uh, Eight is Bears. I think the Bears. I'd say niners, nine. Raiders is his perfect fit. I'd say it would be Niners or Raiders. Nine or ten. I think. I think. I think going. Bears is more likely, if because they do have a vested interest at linebacker. They don't really have anything. <clears throat> they have Trevathan, who they very much like. They play a three four. I know they they just cut Jarrell Freeman, but that does uh, they have players who they do like because Trevathan was injured last year. Who's the I, other one? Christian Jones. They yeah, still have. Th- they like him. He's decent. Um, I think they have too many other needs. I think they would go either corner, Quentin Nelson maybe. or uh, guard or. I think you need to receiver. consider cornerback at that spot if you can't bring back Kyle Fuller. Yeah, it I, needs to be <clears throat> needs to be addressed. Absolutely, they can't. Let I think that they're going to attack secondary. Him. They can't let that secondary fall apart. It was too good last year. Um, but I'd say 9 or 10 would make sense. I think he and Edmonds, you know you know what's crazy? That coin what? toss could determine where Roquan and Edmonds go. Yeah, it's going to be wild. Because I honestly think that we could see the Raiders and the 49ers going back-to-back linebacker. It's uh, possible. You're thinking what, Edmund Smith? I'm thinking, depending. I think Roquan fits better with San Francisco. I think Edmonds fits better with Oakland. Because I think they need the interior guy more because they like to use Bruce Irvin on the outside and move him yeah. inside on sub downs. I, I would prefer Roquan Smith 
on the inside opposed to Tremaine Edmonds, who I would more prefer in an Anthony Barr style role. It's definitely possible. I mean, I could see that for sure. Because, um, like, I, I'm going to say for a minute, screw where like where he projects as a scheme yeah. fit. Look at what he's done at Georgia on the inside. If yeah. you can, you know, help out some of those flaws, and there aren't many. It's just, you know, it's, it's run defense. Is run the only... defense, but not so much box to box because he has that insane sideline yeah. to sideline range. But it's, you know, in through the tackles, hitting yeah. the gaps and shedding blocks. Because that's in a fourth in a four three, he's not going to be a penetrator anyway. So no. that's not a that's not so much of a concern. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen some stuff on Edmonds where he doesn't play to contact. He'll try to work around people, and he was extremely effective doing it. But that's not something you can really get away with in the NFL. So, I don't know. I think both of those places are good. Honestly, though, the more I think about it, the less I think San Francisco is going to take a, uh, a linebacker. I don't think they will. I mean, I from a rationale standpoint of I'm going could, cornerback could, could or Ruben guard. Foster be gone? Like, that, that that's a serious concern. If it's not something mm-hmm. that they're worried about... Um, I would definitely go corner. I think you, you have something with Akella Witherspoon, but you need to improve that at more. Um, I could see Derwin James going Ooh, to San Francisco. That'd be spicy. He's another guy who's going to skyrocket because of this combine. I got to say, though, with the Niners, I do <clears throat> like them for upgrading at safety due to Eric Reed leaving. But yeah. I think Jaquiski Tart, who has seen action in that like center field role, I think maybe they don't necessarily need to go safety very high. Who's they have? They have another safety, Adrian Colbert. Yeah, was I mean, solid at the end of the year last year. Yeah, but I I do think Derwin James is more of a game changer. Yeah, that, um, that's true. But if, if you think, hey, we have an up and coming young player, maybe we'll wait a yeah. year. And, if and Quentin Nelson see is Derwin gone, James at, at high point. If Quentin Nelson is gone, I think that is the perfect location for a defensive player. And you're not going edge rusher. Like, we, we know that's not happening. Yeah, um, no way. So it would either be corner or it would be uh, safety, maybe. I mean, you could rationalize maybe a wide receiver. But yeah, if... if uh, I, I, this is, a, this if is not Ridley's the... Cl- on the board, I'm not sure you take him. I, don't, I, I and wouldn't. He will be. I wouldn't take him. While I understand Ridley's really good, He's going to be 24 at the end of his rookie season. That's what worries me. But it's at, at the end, like wide receiver. December, December of 94 was when he was born. But the point of that is still, this is a very deep wide receiver class. It's just not top heavy. Yeah, I would so agree with that. There are a lot of guys in there who I would really like, whether it be Dante Pettis, James Washington, Christian Kirk as a slot guy. Um, Michael, I really like Auden Tate. Auden Tate's I, I, pretty good. I like his size and speed. Yeah. Uh, Aquanima St. Brown is an interesting player late. Aquanimia St. Brown. <laughs> his family has the oddest group of names. There's Osiris and Amun Ra. That's fantastic. Brown. That is fantastic. Equinemius, Osiris, and Amun Ra. It's Equinemius? Equinemius, yeah. Oh. Well, I've been pronouncing that wrong for years. Oh, well. What's new, right? <laughs> but, uh,. No, but um, then there's Michael Gallup, who pro Michael football Gallup fo- generating some hype. M- Michael Gallup is pro football focus's number one rated wide receiver. I saw that. I retweeted that. I thought that was I was very su- I was very surprised. They had Bradley Chubb as the number three edge. That who were the top two? Harold Landry and Arden Key. Um, they said that Chubb doesn't have the edge bending. He doesn't have the uh, the agility. That's that's accurate. But Which, I don't so think that's a I, I think I think they look at him more as a Derek Barnett, Brandon Graham type than they do as a uh, a, a true edge bender. And I think they said that Landry and Key both have that that trait. Um, they had Mink as the number two corner. Who is number one? Josh Jackson. Josh Jackson worries me because small sample. Think, yeah, but you know what? He's another guy converted wide receiver. He ha- his he- ball skills are so good. He, they're so, so good. good. But, I, but I, the reason that they had Minka number two is because they feel like he profiles more as a nickel, based on his own preference and his play, his uh, the amount that he's played inside, and that if you don't feel that he's a boundary guy, inherently he has less value than Josh Jackson. People keep ball. asking me where I see Minka Fitzpatrick playing, 
And I'm like, it all depends on who drafts him. Because yeah. I could see him as a safety with the Bengals. could see him as a nickel to, say, to free safety with the Browns. I could see him as a boundary corner with, if he falls all the way down to the Packers or Ravens or something like that. Or the Colts. I don't know if Mink is a top 10 pick. I don't. Uh, He'd be he, a boundary with the Colts. He definitely would be. I think he's a top 10 pick if you're drafting him as a free safety or a boundary. I think he's a top well, five pick. But I don't know if, you... if teams are going to. Because if, dude, if considering the draft order, if he doesn't go to the Colts or Browns, which he, he most likely will not go to the Colts, Browns could easily pass a number four, uh, especially if they trade down from one. The Jets, would they take Minka Fitzpatrick? I would say it's definitely possible they'd play him as a boundary. Bucks yeah. probably wouldn't take him. They'd be more leaning towards, I think, a, like a Derwin James at safety. Um, I just don't think Minka fits as well there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if the Bears would if they resign or franchise tag Kyle Fuller. And then you're looking at the Niners. I would say the Niners would play him on the boundary for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Oakland, Oakland won't because they have Gary and Conley now with Sean Smith. Um, I love Gary and Conley. He's so good, man. Um, Eleven would be Miami. They pass. Cincinnati passes. Washington. Do you think Miami passes on a corner at eleven? If if I, I, th- I think there? I think they really like Cordray Tankersley, and I think they really like Xavier Howard. Um, I don't know if I agree with them, but I think they I think that's where they're at. Um, Washington, Washington would take him. Apparently, yeah, Norman, absolutely, because they're going to let they're probably going to let Breland walk. Um, I don't I I don't know. There are a lot of teams that could either use a corner or safety. Yeah. So seeing Minka outside of the top ten, I think it's extremely unlikely. But you know what? We've seen guys drop. He could have a bad comp. Jonathan Allen, without injury concerns, is a top five pick last year. Yeah. But Ruben Foster, without off the field concerns, is a top ten pick last year. Think about Laramie Tunsil, what he had to go through. That that guy draft is talented. Night. Yeah. That's one of the most ridiculous draft nights I can ever remember. And, and probably you know what? Most. And then you have the other guy. You have a uh, Lael Collins. That dude that, was a, that one he was, was a so cons- stupid. It was so it's so upsetting. It cost him it didn't cost him money in the end because he still signed a pretty damn good contract with the so Cowboys. Cowboys. But oh man, that was so upsetting. For those who don't know, I'll break it down for you real quick. Basically, Larmy Tunsil's um like significant No, uh, not Lael significant, Collins. Uh, Lael okay, Collins ex girlfriend. Yeah. Was murdered. Um and Larmy, t- not why do I keep saying that? L. Collins was questioned for it, and the cops were like, "Yeah, he's just not even a suspect." And then teams are like, "He's definitely a suspect." And then no one took him. In no, no, no that, round. that's not what happened. That's exactly what happened. No, what what happened was they refused to let him travel out of state. They wouldn't let him attend the draft. The police so, said he wasn't even a suspect. I know, and How the police not take him. And the police still said they would not let him leave the state because they had not finished investigating to determine if he was a suspect and they screwed him they said oh we're uh we're not going to look into this until monday so they basically were like oh yeah this is wednesday oh yeah you're gonna have to stay here till monday i don't Even know we don't th- draft them though because if he had been a suspect <laughs> they said he wasn't prior to but they said that they were not going to release him because they weren't sure I know it, it was it was BS, and you know what? It screwed your Giants. Giants probably would have taken him, and they ended up with Eric Flowers. Yep. Why is my know. camera not in focus? There we go. God, I hate Eric Flowers. <laughs> so yeah, they they panicked and took him because Lael Collins was gone. You imagine Eric Flowers transitioning to guard and being sick because he actually <coughs> profiles well as a guard. <coughs> no, I can't. Speaking of, be amazing. Um, so. Actually, no, I don't have any transition from that. Um, <laughs> let's uh, let's break down our top five risers at the Combine. Interesting. I, th- I think we could compile a list of five each. Okay. Um, I think I have my five written down. I uh, definitely do not. I have, I have one name <clears throat> we talked about earlier. Yeah, that's, you know, there is bias there, I guess. But I really think he could rise a lot if he runs a really good time. Oh, yeah. Because his uh, ball skills are tremendous. He's a playmaker in the secondary. He has great instincts and awareness. Yeah, Josh Jackson, really good. No, <laughs> oh, okay. no I know. Um, so why don't you start? Let's, uh, you know, let me just do the transition real quick. This is going to be its own little separate video on my channel as well. So 
Hey guys, welcome to the Cover 2 Podcast. We've been doing this for about half an hour already. If you want to watch the full show, make sure to go check it out on Bengals channel, on SoundCloud, and iTunes. All the links will be in the description below. But today we're going to be breaking down, pre-combine, our top five players who we think could rise up draft boards in mock drafts and in the NFL's eyes because of the combine itself. We have five players each. Bengal, if you want to start with one of those, we'll alternate back and forth. And I literally can... don't even have five. This is the first I'm hearing about this. No, I know. Well, no, <laughs> no, I mentioned it at a while ago. I mentioned when... it at three o'clock. Um, when, but... when did you say five? I don't think I said five. I said players, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> What is this? <laughs> this is me catching you off guard with you. <laughs> this is me All catching right. you with um, your pants down. Um, but I'm say my my first one is Deshaun Elliott. The reason I'm saying that is he is a playmaking <clears throat> safety, fantastic ball skills. Yeah, he went to Texas. All right, I know. But you look at the instincts, you look at the awareness, you look at the playmaking ability that Deshaun Elliott has, and he's a top safety in the draft. Just is. And he's not generating the hype of a top safety in the class, despite having all these great qualities, despite having the size, yeah. despite having the athletic profile. If he's a guy that comes in and runs sub four five as a safety, he's going to skyrocket upward. He'll you be going to the to Browns in the could. second round. I think he, he Deshaun Elliott, the, yeah. if he runs a sub four five, he is bottom end of the first round. He could sneak in. Wow. Wow. You know what? I, I don't disagree. Um, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go with a softball for the first one. I think Derwin James is going to destroy the combine. Um, the, it seems like there's some fatigue with him. That he was a guy who was so highly touted as a freshman, and he had kind of a down sophomore year, but he bounced back in a big way this past year. And I feel like people have been mocking him a little bit late for a lot of the season being like mm -hmm. a second rounder or a very late first. I think with a good combine, this dude is going to come in and he's going to just, he'll, he'll end up being a top 15 pick, maybe even top 10. I think Tampa Bay is on the table. I think you have uh, San Francisco's on the table, as we mentioned before. Um, I think if someone wanted to trade up for him, that there's always that possibility. Um, the Jets could take a third safety if they really wanted to. That'd be bold. <laughs> that would be that would be a bold. Well, it strategy depends there. on where they profile. If they see yeah. him as in the box guy, which he probably is going to be. You, you good mean in like that Marcus role. May and Jamal Adams? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, what? They, they're collecting all the in the box safeties. That's all they're they gonna, need. They're going to run a rare. They're going to run the diamond formation. It's going like to be the Patriots. A... <laughs> Four That'd safeties. Four safeties. Um, no, but I think that he could absolutely work his way in there. Um, I think you could see him going to, uh, depends on what Cincinnati or Miami want to do. I think Rashad Jones is, he's lost a little bit of a step. He's still a very talented player, but they have an obvious need at the other safety spot if they feel that Derwin James could fill that. You know, there's a few different places, but I think he could easily work his way into the top 15. Uh, who's your number two? I would say next up, I'm going to go further. I don't want to focus really on the top guys. I'm going to say DJ Chark, okay. receiver out of LSU. He's been so good for LSU. He's flying under the radar. I think he's probably a top receiver uh, in this draft class, despite you know not generating the hype of maybe a top five guy at his position. Yeah. Uh, he has good size at six foot two, and he can fly. He really can. I think he'll run sub four five maybe at six foot two, and I think that's going to generate even more hype for him. He's got the playmaking ability with the ball in his hands. He's he's a really good player. I think a good time would help him out. I think he's going to jump really high. Um, so I'm excited to see what he can do with the combine and uh, rise up boards potentially. He's probably a top five receiver in the class, and he's just not generating wow. that type of hype. I agree. I think with some good time, there are a lot of wide receivers who could uh, leapfrog up this board. I think the one for me that stands out the most is James Washington. Yeah, um, You have James Washington. A lot of people look at him and like, well, he played in that air raid system in Oklahoma State. He's not exactly a guy who had a diverse route tree. He's not a guy who might have that legitimate deep speed, despite being probably the premier deep threat in college football this past year with Mason Rudolph. I mean, his ball tracking skills are phenomenal. But it doesn't seem like he gets the love that he deserves. But if he ends up running legitimate 4-4-5 or 4-4, um, I feel like he's a guy who could absolutely work his way into that first round conversation. I mean, the fact that he is so lethal down those sidelines with his ball tracking, with his hands, with 
everything. If he has that legitimate deep speed to go with it, I think teams are going to say, okay, he's the real deal. This isn't just the air raid that's making him look so good, which I think was a ridiculous argument anyway. If you have that ball tracking ability and you can create separation at the top of your routes, you're going to be a good player no matter what. That's that's definitely true. I'll give you another Oklahoma State guy. I'm, I'm sure you know where this is going. Marcel Aitman. Love him. Love six, him. Six foot four, big body, one of the strongest receivers yeah. I've seen for in any draft class for a while. Super, super strong. And when you talk about strength at the receiver position, you're really talking about that hand strength. Yes. Someone like Alshon Jeffrey, I think he compares pretty well to in terms of how strong his hands are, in terms of how physical he is um, at the point of attack going up, high-pointing that ball. I think he's phenomenal in that department. This is a guy that could run mid-4-5. or five. And that would be a tremendous time for a receiver that's as big and strong as yep. he is at six foot four. Marcel Aitman, another guy that could generate a ton of hype at receiver. And I know we keep going receiver, receiver, yep. receiver. But these are legitimate concerns at a receiver class that's deep. But again, like we said a little bit earlier, not top heavy. A bunch of guys could move. So between yep. you know the third best receiver and the tenth best receiver, there's not a ton of separation. Got a lot of guys could flip flop. It's going to be really exciting. Marcel Aitman is someone I'd be, uh, I'd be looking out for. Absolutely. Um, as an honorable mention, I think Equan uh, Equanimius. Equanimius. Equanimius St. Brown, another huge guy who, if he puts together a good combine, is going to rise up boards. I don't think he's Not going that to. Not physical, though, which is what no, but me. I don't think he's going to be a top, you know, top two round guy. I think he'll be a, a late day two, early day three guy. But at his size, if he's running what some people are saying he could, which could be in the in the high four uh, four fours, at mm -hmm. his size, that's that's legitimate speed for someone of his of his size. And I think you're gonna have to take a risk on him. Auden Tate's another guy who I don't think is going to run that quickly, but he's six five two twenty. I mean, there are a lot of big body guys. Whether you want to consider him, Cortland Sutton, you know, there are huge wide receivers in this class who can make a splash. Um, even Jordan Lasley, who's not very tall. But I know we're on a bit of a, a wide receiver kick. So my number three guy that I'm going to mention is probably going to be uh, Kiki Cootie. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. He's 5'11", 225. I, I think it might be Kuti, like, but like, Kuti? Like that, yeah. Okay, it might be. But uh, he's unbelievable in terms of he is a slot receiver. He led the nation in slot receptions this past year with 82. He had the most slot yards at 1,265. Um, he's a guy who 5'11", 225, so he has, put on, he has some pretty good weight out of Texas Tech. But mm -hmm. I think the most impressive thing about him is that he is, uh, I'm trying to find it, he ranked 8th in the nation with 542 yards on deep passes, despite tying for 114th with only 18 deep targets. Really? 18 deep targets and 542 yards deep in Texas Tech with Nick Shimanek. That's so pretty ridiculous. If this guy comes in and runs a legitimate speed, I think you're going to see a guy who can r literally just elevate himself up that board because he will be a slot seam ripper. And having a guy like that, you take the top off a of defense out of the slot and you make everything else easy for everyone around them. It's gonna He's a really interesting player for me, a junior out of Texas Tech. Well, let me give you another name then. Because um, we, we've talked a lot about on this on this podcast before um marcus davenport in yes. his athletic profile let's talk about a different edge because we know marcus davenport's generating a lot of top 10 buzz let's talk about a guy that we've mentioned a lot as well dorance armstrong jr out of kansas yep ridiculous athletic profile i think he's going to run sub four six and that is again legitimate speed off the edge you talk about the next level of speed and you have a guy with his frame his size um, at six foot four, about two fifty. If he yeah. comes in and runs sub four six, are you kidding me? That that's the that'll acceleration be burst off the edge. I think he's. I, I think he legitimately could. He could run sub four six, and that would definitely solidify. Um, I would say between picks twenty to forty five for him. He's a top ooh, second round ooh. guy. He's uh, a guy I, that could go pretty high. I don't know if I would say that high. I think he would be more of one of those steals in the second or third round. You think he's gonna fall? I don't think he'll fall to the third, especially if he runs sub four six. I, I, I understand. He's where gonna, you're he's gonna from. have a great vertical, great broad. He's explosive. What I do you know. look for an edge rusher? Explosiveness. Yeah. I, I would really have to be his full profile put together that mm -hmm. would would do that for me. But 
he's a really interesting player. I like Dorrance Armstrong. We, we talked about him at length. Um, mm-hmm. Weird that he had a better season coming off of when he was actually injured than when he was healthy. That, that's yeah. another thing that was really kind of strange with him. The production is going to be a curiosity for a few people. Same thing with Arden Key, though. Um, next up for me, I have uh, Vita Vea, who knows tackle out of Washington. You know, Danny Shelton's alma mater. You know, he fills that similar role. He's a guy who, as uh, one of my friends put it, he looks like the guy from Pop Warner who is three to four years older than everybody. But they put an X on his helmet, and he's just going around. He's tossing people side to side. That's pretty funny. He used to be a 270-pound running back in high school. Big guy. He's 350 pounds right now. And he he is projected to run a sub-5 40. That would be not fair. That's that's too much weight to be that fast. That's like Danny Shelton on steroids. It's like Dontare Poe, basically. If he is able to do that, um, I, you know, because he's a nose tackle, because he's a nose tackle for the most part, there is the question of, do you think he's going to be a guy who is going to be valued enough to go in that first round? And I'd say that it's possible because I do think nose tackles are still important. Just look at Demont Harrison, look at Danny Shelton and those running. Harrison's a beast. Just the fact that they're so good on that interior, but Vea being that type of guy, if he's able to do that, I think teams are going to say, you know what? It's worth this, it. This guy's a monster. Let's take a shot on him. Um, so he's another guy who I could see rising. Who is your uh, fourth guy? I'm going to say I'm going to stick with the theme of edge rushers here. I'm going to say Harold Landry just because I think he's another guy that's extremely explosive. And the real concerns with him or how is he going to play after injury? Because the production's been there, but he's also a guy yeah. that dealt with injury a little bit. So if he comes out, combine, and is extremely explosive, healthy-looking, runs seamlessly through the drills, he's going to solidify his spot as a first-round guy. Because I think he was definitely top 10 prior to this season, uh, and he's a guy that's yeah. fallen off. Now you're talking about maybe mid-second round as kind of his uh, his floor there. But I, I, I think that's, I think that's pushing a little bit. I think he's still going to be a first-round guy. I'd say that he doesn't fall past Detroit. Um, already, but I could see him coming up more if if he puts together a good combine. Um, my actually that, that was your fifth guy, wasn't it? That was okay. This is my fifth, Nick Chubb. So mm-hmm. Nick Chubb gets overshadowed, especially on draft Twitter, by <laughs> teammate Sony Michelle, and it's really it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, Nick Chubb was the guy who came in. And he was basically, okay, I'm going to be the guy who pounds the rock, who does a lot of the heavy lifting. Sony's going to be the change of pace guy. So he had a lot of those opportunities to be a little bit more fresh when the defense was getting worn down, trying to deal with Nick Chubb. He made, he had 56 missed tackles forced this year. Few. He had 3.8 yards after contact per attempt. I mean, this guy... You know, people are like, oh, how is he going to do after injury? He did damn well after injury. I mean, this is a guy who is excellent. He was number five in the nation in elusive rating. Um, You know, he's just such a very talented player. You know, there's talk about him maybe dropping to the third round or fourth round. I think with a good combine, he already put up 29 bench press reps, same as Saquon. That's, yeah. He's 5'10", 225. I mean, he's, he's perfect for the perfect size for it. But Nick Chubb is a guy who I think with a good combine, if he runs 4'5", 2 to 4'4". Four, four, I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to run that fast. You don't think he's going <laughs> to run 4'5", 2? I don't think so, no. Okay. Well, if he I does. He's going to be a bit slower. You know what? It really it doesn't matter, honestly, because his balance mm. is so good. He's such a physical player that I think he's going to be a steal no matter where he goes. I think he's going to be this year's... I know people compare him to Alvin Kamara in the sense that he dropped. I think we're going to compare him more to a Kareem Hunt in the sense that he's that type of workhorse that he might not be the receiver that either of those guys are, even though he never really had opportunities to showcase it at Georgia. But he's a guy who I think could absolutely devastate teams um, with his balance, with his vision. And he's a guy who I think could be a huge riser at this combine. Certainly fair. All right. 
So now that we've discussed the combine, any other players that you want to mention? Do you want to talk about quarterbacks for a second, and then we'll jump into the Broncos? That's a nice transition. In terms of, like, athleticism and how they're going to do, or what, what yeah, are you Yeah, anything, anything you want to talk about. Um, Darnold is not throwing. I which... heard that. Everyone's asking me about that. I'm like, I don't care. I already don't think he's good. What is, it, what is him not throwing in a show me other than that he's, you know, not confident in his own abilities enough to drop his stock any more than it already has? Yeah, I wonder why he's not throwing. I don't know if he's injured or if it's just a choice. If it's a choice, I don't respect it. I, mm. I understand it. I'm I don't sure respect it, is. it. I don't know if he's injured. I mean, I can just look that up real quickly. But, um, oh, what, what do you think uh, Lamar Jackson's going to run? Let, let's do that prediction game. Four, four, ooh, four, four, two. I think he's going to run really, really fast. Okay. What's, uh, the, what's the record? RG3 has it. What was his 40 time? Um, RG3, oh, for quarterbacks, you mean? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Four, four, one. But that's what uh, RG3 ran? Yeah. And um, I pegged uh, Lamar Jackson at four, four, two. <clears throat> it could be even faster. Four three three unofficial for Michael Vick. That was at his pro day. I don't um, like unofficial times. Uh, Reggie McNeil, Texas A and M four four flat, two thousand six. Quarterback. Tyrod Taylor and Marcus Vick four four seven. RG three four four one. Where do you have him? He's 215 right now. I'm going to say he's going to run a 4.45. I think he's going to give up a little bit of that speed, just a little, to make sure that he has the weight on him that he needs. He's so fast. that I don't know. It'll be really fun to see. Yep. Uh, Darnold, 9 and 3 and 3 eighth inch hands. At 6'3 and 3 eighths, 221. Interesting. Yep, I mean he he he's right in the middle of that those all thresholds. Um, Mayfield nine and a quarter inch hands, Josh Allen ten and an eighth, uh, Lamar Jackson nine and a half. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna drop my spicy hot. Uh, this is what's gonna make all of your subscribers hate me for the week. Uh, quote. They already do. It's you just being here. They already hate you. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's tough. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's, it's a tough crowd, man. It's a tough crowd. Uh, what what's gonna make them hate you even more? Lamar Jackson. Right now, it is better than Aaron Rodgers was on draft day. Uh, no. No, he's not. Yes, he is. <laughs> I don't agree. I, I, I don't think the Tedford quarterbacks were any good. I think that, I think he needed three years to grow out of forced mechanics that weren't good. And Lamar Jackson, I, I don't know why you don't like recognize that he's inconsistent. No, I he, like he is Jackson. inconsistent. I think his ceiling is very high. Did, did you he's see not that good right now? Did you see Aaron Rodgers in the preseason prior to starting in 2008? I, I would have to analyze his tape. It I don't was, have it on. It, Paxton Lynch looked better this <laughs> season. Paxton Lynch is also a beast. Have you seen how far he can throw and how tall he is? <laughs> so. It, it, it was really bad. It, it was really bad. He was falling back under any sort of pressure. He was in. He couldn't hit consistently 10-yard curls. Like, he was throwing it into the dirt. His arm wasn't that strong. He didn't look like Aaron Rodgers at all. He looked like a deer in the headlights. It was like, oh my god, I have the ball for more than one second. What do I do? <laughs> it was really bad. Take your word for it. I mean, I don't have the... I don't have the tape. It was really bad. I, I know. I understand that. But that that's my opinion. That I think that also Brett Favre taught him, even though he hates Brett Favre completely. Aaron Rodgers despises Brett Favre. You didn't know that. <laughs> Aaron um, Rodgers is also like a freak. No, but. Uh, He's so weird. I love him. but Brett Favre wasn't exactly great with Aaron Rodgers, but he would play like pranks on him all the time. And Rodgers, like, took it super seriously. <laughs> like, Aaron he, Rogers, uh, His family also, like, doesn't like him. Vice yeah, first. yeah, like, there, there was a story where uh, Aaron Rodgers went and uh, he was signing memorabilia, right? 
So Brett Favre swapped out the dummy helmet with Aaron Rodgers' actual helmet. So he signed it, and then they gave it away. And he went to go and practice, and he didn't have a helmet. And Aaron Rodgers, like, started crying in, uh, in the locker room because of it. It's oh, like, no. it, it was like, wait, what? This is, <laughs> this, no. this, is, this is like the most harmless prank you could possibly pull. But he really hated Brett Favre. But the point is, Brett Favre was one of the best at generating torque with his core to influence his arm strength, just period. Mm. And and I when watching Rodgers initially come into the league and what he's at now, you can tell that he studied Favre and picked up on that. Because his arm was nowhere near where it is now coming into the league, even even like 2006, 2007. So I, I really don't think that he was on the level that you would expect from Aaron Rodgers. And I think that if Rodgers was playing today, back then, the way that he was, he would have been considered a bust immediately, like the way that he was playing in the preseason. He is the most talented quarterback in NFL history. I know. It's amazing. It's amazing, the transformation. It's like he got a, a Kim Kardashian-level uh lift it, 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 it's it's unbelievable take some time when you have a chance all of you take some time when you have a chance to look up aaron Rodgers' preseason tape from 2005 through uh 2007 it, it's it's shocking so with that being said let's rebuild the denver broncos <laughs> Ooh, that's, talking that's about quarterbacks right there. talking about those quarterbacks dough and yeah, we know john elway loves him just any quarterback, as long as you remind him of himself. Yes. Or perfect. So as long as you are bad with a big arm and goofy-looking teeth, you are good. <laughs> Don't no, do I, my man, John Elway, like I that. kid, I kid, I kid. Okay, so let's put on our – let me just turn around to my, uh, my building hat. They don't have a ton of money that they can just toss around here. Um, they don't at all. Let, let's I, look at the Denver Broncos. They currently are at $23 million. Not good. <clears throat> not ideal. Not ideal. Um, it seems like they're going to trade Aqib Tlaib. I would, I would guess. So that, that'll Aqib bring Tlaib them up to about 30. There anymore. That'll bring them up to about 34 mil. Is a hat around here? I don't think I do. No, nah, it's okay. You don't need a hat. We're going to go hoodie. Yeah. We're not. So, not gonna fit. so let's say they're at uh, 34 mil. So, let's say we don't address anything else from relating to that, uh, you know, cuts or anything more for now. Sure. Um, we're not bringing back Donald Stevenson. We're not bringing back Virgil Green. Todd Davis, we like. Jamal Charles is gone. Jared Crick probably has gone, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alan Barber, Cody Latimer, Billy Wynn, Billy Turner, Brock Osweiler, uh, Lorenzo Doss. Oh, oh, that's Cody a Latimer has value as a special teamer. Yeah, but he's a UFA. Yeah, and then there's not really a need. <laughs> uh, Betty Fowler is an RFA. Oh, th this is where things get tough. Matt Paredes, RFA. Shaquille Barrett, RFA. Benny Fowler, RFA. You need to bring back Paredes to center. You have to. Yeah. Oh, One he's of the top so centers good. in the NFL. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Whatever you have to pay him, have to bring him back. So let's. Uh, what does he get a command? As a let me, center. Let me look at the market because he's literally one of the best. Yeah. Um. Ooh. What are we looking at here? Between what is Travis Frederick getting? Nine point four. Linder's getting ten point three. How is he getting that much? Mac is getting nine. Justin Britt is getting nine. Pouncey's getting 8.9, Rodney Hudson 8.9, Marquise. So, that's weird. I feel like the better centers somehow are getting less money than the, like the Corey other Corey Lindsley, 8.5. Jason I, Kelsey, 6.2. You'd have to figure that <laughs> based on the numbers here, Paradis would demand, uh, or command, I should say, About rather nine. contract just above nine, I would say. So if Brandon Leonard's getting 10.5 and, and the rest of those centers are getting about nine, Rodney Hudson's getting 8.9, you said. I would say Paradis, let's, we can give him 9 flat. I'd be comfortable okay. with that. Yeah. Um, okay, so Paradis, uh, 5 years. How old is he? 
Should be young if he's an RFA. Um, let me see. Matt Paradis is 28. Holy shit. Yeah, I, I, five years feels a bit long, if I had to say. Four years. Uh, I, I just give him four. <clears throat> so four for 36. Yeah. Okay. So that brings us back down to about 22, tw no, uh, 25 mil. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, Shaq Barrett. Resign. Have to. Yeah. Um, he's not going to command top money. No, I don't think so. But he's 25. Good player. Um, as an RFA, he's going to sign a pretty good contract out there. Someone's going to force That's our fair. hand. I, I don't know if I'd pay him more than more than six and a half. Six and a half would put him in the top tier, mind you. It's it's, it's a weird considering, market. Considering his age and abilities, along with progression, I think that six would probably be fair, though. Yeah, six for uh, six for four, six for five. Uh, four, four, four. Okay. I like these four-year deals. Yeah. What else? I mean, the Broncos, they're not bad. They're just in a weird spot in terms of contracts and age. They they, they do have issues, though, in a lot of places. They're, yeah, uh... no, you, a cornerback needs to be upgraded if Akeem Tlaib is leaving. Or maybe, I mean, Bradley Roby, I guess, is still under contract to play well, on the well, outside. I, I think the only thing that we can do is address... Uh... Offensive line needs to be improved. Yeah, I think we need to attack those things in the draft, though, if, if we yeah. want to target Kirk Cousins. I feel like we almost have to. Yeah. If it's, we're the Denver Broncos, it's we really need a quarterback. But... Yeah, it's really bad cap space situation already. But you have to if you're the Broncos. If you're trying to compete, you have to go after Kirk Cousins. And if you don't, you almost have to trade up for a quarterback. Yeah. Um... It's like Even though you're at five, it's like, what if you want – one of those top two or three quarterbacks and with other teams potentially trading up, we could see three quarterbacks go within the first four picks. Yeah. And you know what? There's no one else that we can cut. Yeah. The, the money's just not there. Demarius Thomas, we'd have to, for five mil and freeing up, we'd, we'd incur seven mil dead cap. That's, I don't, I don't like that very much. No. And he's, he's really the only other option. We can't do anything with Chris Harris. We can't do anything with Sanders. We could cut Roby, but that would be terrible. Um, yeah, there's no one else. C.J. Anderson, I guess, but... You just work with Devontae Booker? For four and a half mil, I guess we could draft somebody. Mm. But I don't think it's worth it. Devontae Booker is not that bad. Like, he's... No, but... I'm not starting caliber yet. I like Anderson. Yeah, he's, he's decent. I wouldn't say he's much better than decent, though. No, but I would be conflicted to cut him. Yeah, I wouldn't cut him. Okay, so we have 19 mil in cap space or so. Um, <laughs> so Cousins... He's going to get, like, a max contract. <laughs> I don't know how... I don't know how we can do this still thinking about the franchise's future. Then like, they not... need a quarterback, but... Then let's look elsewhere. Teddy Bridgewater is not Teddy really... Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, I don't... What is he going to get? He's going to get, like, at least 17. How about Sam Bradford? And we draft somebody. I'm, I'm okay with that, because Sam Bradford is aging. He's still solid. Top 10. Yeah. I think I'm, we could I'm get better. Bradford for 14. That's what Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic gets. Yeah. Coming off of injury. All right, all right. If you say so. Okay, let me just double check the, the money. Uh, Glennon got fifteen. Uh, oh, <laughs> you gotta give it. You gotta give him at least fifteen then. Yeah, I don't see Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick's getting three mil. No, his, his previous contract was 14. 
No, I'm saying, but right now. Okay. Uh, Andy Dalton's getting 16. I'd say 15. Yeah. That's I don't I think he's gonna get more than that. Okay, then let's go. Let's give him 16 with uh within incentives. I don't know. All right. No, yeah, two yeah. for two for 32. For That's Bradford. Fair. Yeah, we have that money, I guess. Just okay. just that though. I don't know if we can really sign anybody else at any position. No, we can't. Uh, Todd Davis is gone. <laughs> yeah, it just has to. Yeah. He's really good, but we're going to have to say, hey, Brennan Marshall, you're going to have to play with some random You're going to have to play both linebackers. Positions. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. We'll, we'll, we'll go 10 on 11 to make sure that we have a quarterback. Yeah. Um, so now we're in a spot where we have the fifth pick. Mm-hmm. Do you draft a quarterback here? I think I think you'd be hard pressed not to. I think we have to with Bradford on a two year deal, and you could take more of a risk here at five, depending on who you draft, with him playing underneath a quarterback for a year or two. Let's, let's be say let's be clear. Rosen Rosen off the board. I think you have to say. Let's be clear. Josh Allen is not on the board. Correct. We're not. I, we wouldn't do that to the Broncos. No, we would not. Even it. though they might in real life. Yeah. So when we're the GM, acting GMs of the Broncos. We're gonna say, hey, Josh Allen, go be big and tall somewhere. in Arizona or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So let's say Rosen goes number one. Okay. Number two. You pretty much all other corner, all other quarterbacks available. Not named uh, Josh Rosen. So, could be Team Baker Mayfield here. I think he will be on the board at five. I think Mayfield will be too. I think we should go Mayfield. Um, I'd say Darnold's going to go number number four, maybe. I think the Browns trade out. Maybe the, uh, maybe the Giants take him. Well, let's say Darnold slash Mayfield, depending on who's there. Well, if, if we're the acting GMs, I don't want to take Sam Darnold well at all we, we have we have the ability to to deal with that because we'll be having Bradford mm-hmm. you know like I I understand your hesitance but we really don't have an option I and guess he does have some good traits to him I don't think he might be worth the pick but he for me right now is a third round talent yeah, that's where I that's where he's at for me too. So I think the top five is a little much to ask of a of a third he, round he, talent he's, in he's my qu- mind. He's quarterback uh quarterback six for me. Which Who are your top five? I have Mayfield, <clears throat> Rosen, Jackson. I, I don't know if I'd put Darnold at number four, but I wouldn't put Allen there either. Yeah, I have uh Mayfield, Jackson, Rosen, Rudolph, Loletta, Darnold, Allen. Interesting. And Loletta probably after a good combine will pass up Rudolph because I don't think Rudolph has much of a ceiling. I would definitely prefer Mason Rudolph to Darnold, Allen, Loletta, and even I would say even like even in next year's class I'd take him over at Clayton Thorson or Drew Locke probably. Well, I'd take him over Locke, too, but I wouldn't pass up Easton Stick for him. So, are we have, agreeing have on Baker Mayfield name? here? Have you heard that name before? I have not. Easton Stick is the new North Dakota State quarterback, and he is legit. Like, he'd be a, he'd be a second-round pick this year if he was eligible. He's that good. Interesting. So... Let's say Mayfield. <laughs> Let, let's say Mayfield. Let's say... Uh, we have to each the best. Yeah. So, let's jump down to that second round. What 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 uh what spot would we be at here? I think it follows up with five in the second. So Denver Broncos draft picks. It would be 30... 40. They have a two. They have two threes as well, and then two fours, and then two fives. A six and a seven. Okay. 
So from what I'm looking at Wikipedia, it says 40 for the next pick. Okay. So at 40, we just lost our inside backer. <laughs> Probably should take one if Rashad we, Evans we also, is there. We also need a corner because we also cut to Aqib to, we traded Aqib to leave. Yeah. You know what? Well, what we, what we, we traded it. We, we, ah, I was about to say that. Ah, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't then go over that. Uh, let's say a fourth. I would say, yeah, add in another fourth there. Okay. So, um, number 40, we need a linebacker, we need a corner, we need offensive, offensive line help. Line. Um, yeah. Um, I would say probably. Let's go offensive line here and then follow up with a linebacker with our first third round pick at, okay. at 71. Because I think at this point in the draft, Rashawn Evans will not be available and he would be my pick. Well, but Leighton Van Der Esch probably could be. Was the... He could be. I wouldn't <clears throat> take him, though. I know it's like, you know, Boise State, Denver Broncos, that's fun. I don't really want to do that, though. I yeah. would say I'd rather take an offensive lineman and I think Colton Miller would be a really good option he's a big big dude yeah only uh, UCLA. yeah i mean that, that's not that's not too <laughs> tall um they do have garrett bulls though you get one on the other side dude. ty sambrello are you kidding me <laughs> get out of here donald stevenson gone who's the starting tackle in that situation yeah no if orlando brown is still here he that won't Baker be. mayfield connection he definitely won't be after 14 bench press reps <laughs> it doesn't matter his arms are really long situational no. strength 14 was Fun shockingly functional low. strength yeah Let, let's get that clear um yeah it, it's shockingly low it's the fifth lowest for any offensive lineman since 1999 that was shockingly low yes really bad sorry fifth but lowest since 2010 Seventh lowest since 1999. Uh, mm. But Cody Whitehair was pretty close. He was 16. Cody Whitehair also doesn't play tackle. No, he doesn't. Um, there were some other guys who were kind of in that range. Taylor Decker at 20. but He's a tackle. But yeah, that's also six more. Yeah. But he has shorter arms. You know, it was different things like that. Um, I don't think Orlando Brown's going to be here. No, I don't think so either. I'm okay with Colton Miller. All right. Let's pencil that in. Okay. So let's jump down to the third round where we are at pick 71. Got to be a linebacker here. Got to okay. be. Uh, Malik Jefferson. I'd be okay with that. Okay, he's so, a guy that definitely is going to fall. Yeah. Even with a good combine, he, he's just got too many question marks. Okay. And corners are pretty abundant in this draft. I would say so. Josie Jewell is another interesting guy that... I think will be available at this spot in the third. Yeah. Could think about him as well. If Malik Jefferson's not. Okay. Uh, let's keep moving. We have let's... another third round pick near the end. It's we, a compensatory yeah. selection. Yes, 99. Um, Depends who's there. If Isaiah Oliver's there, absolutely. I don't he's think not going he will to be. be. Yeah. He, he's going to be a second rounder. Um, Jair Alexander probably will be gone too. Yeah. Maybe a Kevin Tolliver? Hmm. He's a guy that, I mean, I feel like we've taken him in the past. I kind of want to mix this up. We don't need to pick a name here. Yeah. We'll just say cornerback. Cornerback. Um, okay. So let's keep moving um, on to pick number 106. Um, I would like to address the outside wide receiver position. I'm fine with that. There are a number of options here. I could throw out a certain name from Oklahoma State here. Oh. Uh, no, James Washington will not be here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Sorry about it. <laughs> yes, I know. Um, Aitman would be interesting. Um, big body. Yes. Marcel Aitman. Cortland Sutton, another big bodied guy. Cortland Sutton is not going to be available here. Are you, really, you kidding me? Well, you never know. Uh, no, I'm, I'm 100% hey, what, positive. Hey, what, uh, what about Michael Gallup? Yeah, let's pencil him in. That's a fun one. That's a Colorado State. You know, that's a, a, a connection right there. Being able to play at altitude is pretty important. Yeah. But if he generates more hype, uh, we'll, we'll do him here. It's a fun name. 
Yeah, well, I mean, we could we could pencil in Aitman as well for as an option. Mm-hmm. Gallup or Aitman. Um, let's see. The next pick is. Well, let's say. Uh, Let's there's, say there's we, 106 and 109 or let's say let, let's say 113 we traded to leave to the uh redskins let's let's just you know so that would be we have three fourth rounders yeah with that trade yeah so 113 let's just randomly uh, um i am um, i think we need addressed, to go i think i would go maybe go receiver again double dip no i think we need to go offensive line here i think we need to improve that line for whomever we have there there it is. We went Colton Miller. We have, we have Garrett, Garrett Bowles. Bowles. Max so it would be a guard. Yeah. Uh, let me see who would be potentially on the board here. Um, because there are plenty of quality guards. Uh, no, wait. Running back. What are we doing? We need a damn running back. Uh, I, we've forgotten about that one. <laughs> well, this well, is still. I mean, they do have CJ Anderson. Yeah, we could go. Um, we could go Royce Freeman here. We could go. Royce. We could go. Uh, carry on Johnson. I don't think he's gonna be available. You think he'll he'll go before the I fourth? Think he's a third rounder. Okay. Um, um, how about a Rashad Penny? That's I was name. just looking at that name. He's a guy who could fall. Um, I think this is kind of the perfect spot for him. Rashad Penny. Uh, In terms of round wise. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're probably right. Um, Kalen Ballage, another one. I don't know much about him. He's an interesting player. He's 6'3", 230. People like him. Pretty big. Yeah. he's uh, He didn't have a great year. I, he, there's more hype about him than what Pro Football Focus thinks. But um, I, I, I personally like Ballage out of uh, Arizona State. Um, I think Rashad Penny would be a good one. Pencil and Rashad Penny. Okay. And then we have two fits. Oh, wait. We have one more fourth. Did we not take her three? Because it was 106, 109, and you said 113. Oh, I passed up on 109. All right. Okay, so that was 109. So let's do 113 now. Let's um, go uh, offensive line, then guard. Maybe Will Clapp at see. LSU. Will Clapp? Uh, hmm. I could see that. We could go. Uh, we could double dip on wide receiver if you wanted to. Well, um, we can just do that with the fifth. That's true. There, there should be plenty yeah. um, available. So I do definitely want to take another receiver with Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders being gone within the next two years for a fact that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Let's go Will Clapp here, and then we'll look to receiver. And I would say at this point maybe we we talked about Jordan Lasley a little bit earlier. Jordan Lasley would be a – He's an interesting player because obviously UCLA's guys dropped a lot of passes, mm-hmm. but Lasley's a, a dynamic playmaker regardless. Um, yeah, one forty-two. I'd say we go Lasley. All right, let's do it. Inject some youth, give them some time to learn from Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders, refine their game a bit. Um, I was thinking about Cedric Wilson here for the Boise State connection. Interesting. Go, go Colorado, but I think you know realistically. Teams aren't going to draft for that reason. Yeah, no, that's. I, I will actually, you know what? To be fair, the like Denver and Colorado is that one true exception because we're talking about playing at that high altitude. Yeah, that's the only exception though. Um, so I mean, if we were going to, that would be the time. But I mean, historically, I can't remember the Broncos drafting too many Boise State slash Colorado players. Yeah, no, I I can't think of them either. Uh, I think we go corner next. Okay. I think we look and see uh, maybe Boston College's Isaac Yadam. I think he could Potential be a guy for us. Yeah, we can throw him in, throw his hat in the ring, okay. or, uh, whatever they say. We we have another fifth rounder, right, you said? Yeah, two fives, 163 now. 163, okay. So Isaac Yadam. I misspelled his name terribly, and I don't care. Um, <laughs> eh, not not too bad. Not pretty bad. It's a uh, Y A or excuse me, Y I A. No, I, I miss I misspelled his first name. <laughs> you don't know how to spell Isaac? No, I. This is not a normal way to spell Isaac. Yeah, it totally is. I think it's it's I S A A C. That's how you spell it. It's I S A A C. That's how you spell Isaac. No way. 
What do you mean? I, I, I don't know, man. That, that This just... I don't know. <laughs> Isaac Bruce is like that. Is it really? I, I didn't notice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't spell many Isaacs. I spell more Isaiahs um, than Isaacs. And Isaiah is another one. Is, is it I... A A H or is it? It's I A A H. I A H. It depends. Yeah, it does. There's Isaiah some... Thomas is different from Isaiah Thomas. I know. Yeah, it's just there's so many different names. There, some names are ridiculous. Some of them are normal. I, I, you know, don't bother me. I can't wait for Amun Ra St. Brown. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> the uh, the Egyptian. Look, Pharaoh look, Amun it it, it took it took me long enough to learn how to pronounce I, uh, Michael Humanawanui. We we don't need more of these names. <laughs> what about uh uh oh, Pisa Tino Isamoa? Oh no, another another Ram. How about a basketball player, Epi Udo? E K P E, U D O H. Whoa! He doesn't. No way. That's you're saying the K is silent. Yes. I was not aware of that. <laughs> it's Epi Udo. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. I've looked that up. <laughs> really? What are you looking for? I don't know. I, I dropped a... Uh, oh. <laughs> I accidentally took the cap off of a Sharpie with my foot. Yeah. And I didn't realize... Oh, okay. I know that's an odd. You probably never heard that. Sentence. No, I, 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 on this show everything is normal. <laughs> just... sure. I gotta, I gotta pull the Matt Patricia. Oh God. Get that in the in the headset though. There we go. But uh, I think that's pretty much it. So we re-signed uh, Paradis. We re-signed Barrett. We signed Bradford for three years. Uh, for two years, thirty-two mil. We draft Mayfield at five if he's there. Uh, Colton Miller at 40, Malik Jefferson or a linebacker at 71, a corner at 99, 106 we take Michael Gallup or Marcel Aitman, 109 if he's there Rashad Penny, otherwise we'll go you know Royce Freeman or someone of that of that nature, uh, 113 we'll go Will Klepp if he's there, 142 we go clap. Jordan Lasley, clap, 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 like uh, I have the clap, yes, 142 Jordan Lasley and 163 Isaac Yadam. So, without further ado, that is going to wrap it up for the Cover 2 podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed episode number 11. Enjoy the Combine. Uh, Bangle will be having some really special stuff coming for you guys relating to the NFL draft in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. A lot of pressure, a lot of... Uh, now better... I have to actually do that. Yeah, you actually have to deliver here. Um and if you don't, I'll make sure to comment in every single video and respond to every single comment. I'm sure you do. Last mock draft, I was going through that today. You were, ooh, I bet I'm going to disagree with all this. And then you're like, at the end, you're like, I didn't. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was very impressed that you didn't uh, go off the grid on that. But um, So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm Unlight Swami for Bangle and the Cover 2 Podcast. And we'll be talking to you guys next Thursday. Peace.